of Allah Almighty, we are studying the tafsir of Surah Ar-Rahman, and so far we have covered uh, a few topics in detail. The beginning of the surah discusses the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, the most merciful, taught the Qur'an. And then the surah continues to discuss the creation of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching mankind the ability to speak. Going on to Allah Almighty pointing out His immense blessings in the universe around us. The sun and the moon moving with precision and trees and plants being in complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we will continue from verse number 7 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states وَالسَّمَاءَ رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ And Allah elevated the sky and placed the scale or the balance أَلَّا تَطْغَوْ فِي الْمِيزَانِ That you do not commit injustice with regards to weighing or measuring وَأَقِيمُوا الْوَزْنَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَا تُخْسِرُوا الْمِيزَانِ And establish the scale with justice and do not fall short in weighing or measuring. These three verses, verse 7, 8 and 9, have a common theme, a common concept. So we'll discuss them, we'll reflect on them together, inshaAllah. These three verses discuss the concept of the, the mizan, al mizan. The word al mizan is found in all three of these verses. The word al mizan has various different commentaries. Some scholars have mentioned that al mizan means the concept of justice itself. Some have said that it's the actual tool that is used for weighing and measuring. And some have said that it means the thing which you weigh, the item that you're weighing, the object or the, the product, the material that you're actually weighing is referred to as Al-Mizan. In any case, the common theme, the concept, the lesson from these verses is the concept of justice, the concept of being fair, the concept of dealing with people as you want to be dealt with yourself. And this is an essential concept in our religion. This is an essential concept in Islam. In Surah Al-Hadid, verse 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Indeed, we sent our messengers with clear proofs. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ And we sent down with them the book and the scale. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the concept of messengers being sent for the guidance of mankind. And normally when we think of messengers being sent, we think messengers are sent with divine books, with revelation, with wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which they are. Of course, this is a key component of uh, guidance. Allah Almighty sending messengers and sending books with those messengers. But here we see in Surah Al-Hadid, which links to our topic today, Allah Almighty is saying that He sent messengers with clear proofs and He sent them with two things, the book and the scale. لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بالقسط. So that people would establish justice. So that people would establish fairness and balance. And in the commentary of that verse, it's mentioned that وَرُوِيَ أَنَّ جِبْرِيلَ نَزَلَ بِالْمِيزَانِ وَدَّفَعَهُ إِلَى نُوحِ وَقَالَ لَهُ مُرْ قَوْمَكَ يَزِنُوا بِهِ that the actual, the scale, the, the object, the tool that's used for weighing and balancing, this was actually sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel alayhi salam came down with this physical scale and he gave it to Nuh alayhi salam and he told Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam all those thousands and thousands of years ago, command your nation 
to weigh using the scale. This is a, a huge blessing, the, the, the concept of scales and measuring and you know how we have these different uh, modes of measurement that have been devised and people when buying and selling, they are able to ensure that they are buying or they are paying for an exact amount due to the concept of the scale. If there's no such thing as a scale, there's no such thing as a, a, a means of weighing, a tool to weigh or a tool to measure, uh, these things would not be possible. We would not, we would not know exactly uh, how much of an item we are purchasing or selling. And this has a, a key importance in our, our psychology as well, because the human being naturally doesn't like to be cheated. And even in the smallest of things, if someone is, is tricked or deceived, he considers it as a means of belittlement considers himself to have been insulted if someone cheats him out of you know, a few pence or someone tricks him. So if it were not for the mizan, if it was not for the scale, if it was not for this tool, shaitan would have more opportunity to sow seeds of discord between people. Because in buying and selling, there would be no exact way of knowing the amount that you've purchased or that you've sold. Because of that, there would be greater chances of people committing injustice. There's no such thing as a, as, a, as a scale. People would be cheated and deceived on a more frequent basis. Because of that, this would give shaitan an opportunity to create discord between people. So the mizan and the correct establishment of the mizan is what prevents that. Some scholars have mentioned that uh, al-mizan is also a name of the sharia, of the legal rulings of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a law by means of which we have to live, according to which we have to live. A name of that law is also al-mizan. We call it sharia. It's also referred to as al-mizan because it is the only means of establishing true justice on the earth. If people want peace, tranquility and justice to be established, and we want, uh, you know, people uh, talk about achieving world peace, the only way to achieve world peace, the only way to achieve justice on uh, a global level, on a community level, on a national level, even on a family level, is through Sharia. It's through the law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. And because this law, like I mentioned, is based on Adl, it's based on justice. And the concept of Al-Mizan, when we talk about Sharia, means I'ta'u the definition of justice in Islam is to give everyone who deserves a right their right. Whoever deserves a particular right, for them to be given that right is justice. And for somebody not to get what they deserve, for somebody not to be given the right that they are due is injustice. So this is something which applies on a, a huge scale, on a global scale, and also on a on a person-to-person um, -person scale. So whether we look at uh, issues, huge issues like, like poverty across the world, if people were giving the due rights to those who deserve them, there would be no such thing as poverty. If everybody in the world gave zakat, there would be no such thing as poverty. And Muslims in history have proven this. In history, there has been occasions where uh, like in the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, in the time of Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu an as well. And as will happen at the end of times, when Sayyidina Imam Mahdi radiallahu an who comes. In history, and as it will happen in the future, when Islam is established in society correctly, when a community, when a nation, when a government rules according to the rules of Islam in accordance with Quran and Sunnah, justice prevails to such an extent, like in those times, in the time of Sayyidina Umar for example, a time came where people were giving their zakat, everybody who had to give zakat was giving zakat, to such an extent that poverty was eradicated. And now when people went out to give zakat, they couldn't find anybody who was poor enough that they are deserving of zakat, because everybody was well off. And this is the way that Islam provides uh, solutions to such huge problems. So giving everyone who's due a certain right their right. This is justice in Islam. 
that's uh, one example on, on, a, on a massive scale, on a huge scale. Even our problems in our households, in our families, we have problems of uh, mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws, we have problems with husband and wife, parents and children. If every individual, if every family member was focused on fulfilling the rights that are due to every other family member, all of these problems would be eradicated. And if everyone realized what rights are due to me from my other family members, they wouldn't expect things that they don't actually deserve. So if children knew these are the rights that I must fulfill for my parents, and the child knows these are the rights that my parents have to fulfill for me. Now the child will do his own duties and he will only expect his due rights from his parents. He won't expect things from them or hold things against them because they haven't given him you know, a brand new car for his 16th birthday or his 17th birthday just because his friend got one. Why? Because that's not a right that is due upon him. It's not why do you want the parents to give you that? If people realized, husband and wife realized, what's a duty and what's not a duty, the husband wouldn't have unrealistic expectations of his wife. He wouldn't cause uh, problems or start you know, uh, causing issues in the home when he didn't get certain things that are not actually even his due. If he knew that these things are my rights and these things are not my rights, he would know where he has a valid case and where he doesn't. Likewise with uh, all the other relations in the family. So this is a very vast topic, but it all goes back down to the concept of al-mizan, balance, the scale, and justice. And this is why uh, our religion of Islam is a complete way of life. It governs all of these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to learn about our rights, fulfill the rights of others, and uh, Keep this in mind in our daily interactions. So, uh, in the, the the three verses, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wasama uh, al mizan." He elevated the sky, and he placed the mizan justice. Allah tatghaw fil mizan, that you do not commit injustice in weighing. Wa aqimu al wazna bil qisti, wa la tuxiru al mizan, and establish the scale with justice and do not fall short in weighing or measuring. So Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that an la tatghaw fil mizan means don't take more than you deserve. So in a, in, in a basic business interaction, or you're buying a, you know, a one kg of rice, for example, don't pay for one kg and take more. And la tukhsiru al mizan means don't give less. This is an instruction to the seller. So don't uh, take money for one kg of rice, but only give 900 grams. So both things are prohibited. Te treat others as you wish to be treated. Imam Al-Qurtubi, rahimahullah, uh, mentions a statement of Imam Qatada regarding this ayah. He says, uh, it's as though this ayah is giving us a message. I'adal yabna adam kama tuhibbu an yu'adalalak. O oh, son of Adam, O oh, human being, do justice just as you wish for justice to be done to you. So again, this goes back to everything we've already discussed. If we treat others how we ourselves wish to be treated, then all our problems will be eradicated. If the, if the mother-in-law treated her daughter-in-law as she wished to be treated by her own mother-in-law, then a lot of the problems that we see in our homes wouldn't happen. If that mother-in-law, when, when she was a daughter-in-law, she used to think, you know, I wish I had a bit of leniency. I wish, you know, my mother-in-law understood me. If she puts herself in the other person's shoes, when she becomes a mother-in-law herself, and she treats her daughter-in-law in that way, a daughter-in-law will end up respecting her and doing things out of her own goodwill for her that she wouldn't otherwise. And their relationship will flourish. Just why? Because the person is thinking about the other person, putting themselves in their shoes and treating them the way that the person themselves would want to be treated if they were in that situation, if they were in that position. Uh, and the quote continues, uh, وَأَوْفِي كَمَا تُحِبُّ أَنْ يُوفَلَكَ 
and give in full the way you would wish to be given in full. So when you're buying and selling, give in full just the way you would like to be given in full. فَإِنَّ الْعَدْلَ صَلَاحُ النَّاسِ For indeed, justice is the means of the rectification of people. If we establish justice, society will become rectified. And in one narration it mentions, بِالْعَدْلِ قَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ It is through justice that the heavens and the earth are standing. Everything around us is balanced. We've talked about this before, the precision of the sun and the moon and these things. Everything around us is balanced. And this teaches us that human beings should be balanced too. And every now and again, every now and again Allah Almighty shows us signs of how destructive imbalance is. So we see earthquakes, we see tsunamis, we see hurricanes. We see that when there is a slight imbalance, the amount of destruction that is caused. It's as if Allah Almighty is showing us that everything around us is balanced. And when the balance in nature is disturbed, it causes destruction. Similarly, the human being must also be balanced. Because when the human being is imbalanced, he ends up causing destruction to all those who are around him. Imam Raghib al-Asfahani, rahimahullah, he says regarding uh, al-wazn, he says, this is, هذا إشارة إلى مراعاة المعدلة في جميع ما يتحراه من الأفعال والأقوال. Which means this is an indication towards taking justice into consideration in everything that we do, whether it's our actions or our words. So we need to be balanced in our family life, in our work life, how we treat our bodies, our health, looking after you know, what we eat, how much we exercise, all of these things come into balance. Even how we use our time, how we use our time in everything we do, in everything that we say, we have to take balance and justice into consideration. Uh, there are many stories of the Sahaba Kiram who uh, were so uh, engrossed in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had so much enthusiasm and passion for worship. So the, the verses of Quran were being revealed. The early Muslims, some of them were uh, performing worship in secret. Then uh, slowly when the number of Muslims increased, they were given the instruction to worship in public. In, in this particular era, in this particular time, the Sahaba, their the passion and the enthusiasm and the strength of their Iman was huge. And some of them began to exert themselves in worship to such an extent that they would pray all night and fast every single day. The beloved Prophet والسلام, became aware of, of some of them, some of the, the youngsters amongst them, some of the other Sahaba amongst them, and he approached some of them. And he, he said to them, specifically knowing their particular situation, uh, one Sahabi, the Prophet والسلام, said to him that it has, uh, it has come to my knowledge that you are praying all night and fasting every single day. And this is your continuous routine. The Prophet والسلام, instructed him to worship less, telling him that indeed your family has a right over you, and indeed your body has a right over you. So can you imagine the Messenger of Allah والسلام, who himself has been sent to teach us how to worship Allah, but he is telling the Sahabi to worship less, because the Prophet والسلام, is rahmatul lil alameen, mercy for all of the worlds. He knows what's good for a person and what's not good for a person. He knows the exact amount and the exact balance that a person should be engaging in to ensure that every aspect of his life is taken care of. So that his family life is not disturbed, so that his, uh, his, his family members don't think, you know, he's, he's always in the masjid, he's always praying. He's fasting every single day and he's not spending any time with us. Or he's too weak to spend any time with us or to fulfill our rights. So this is something where a person has stepped out of balance. Similarly, when people don't take these things into account on a larger scale, it can lead to severe consequences. There is a hadith uh, narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, in which he says that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, once addressed us as a group and said, Khamsun idabtulitum bihinna وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَن تُدْرِكُوهُنَّ There are five things 
with which you will be tested. And I seek refuge with Allah, lest you live to see them. The Prophet ﷺ is seeking refuge with Allah from these five things. And from the Sahaba, seeing these things. But the Prophet ﷺ said that these things will happen. A time will come when these things will happen. What are these things? Allahu Akbar. The first one. لم تظهر الفاحشة في قوم قط حتى يعلنوا بها إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون والأوجاع التي لم تكن مضت في أسلافهم الذين مضوا. The Messenger of Allah عليه said this is number one. That immorality never appears amongst the people. Immodesty, shamelessness never appears amongst the people to such an extent that they start committing it openly except that plagues and diseases that were never known to them before amongst their predecessors start to spread amongst them. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ said that when a time comes in which shamelessness and immodesty spreads amongst people to such an extent that it becomes public, what will happen? They will be struck with plagues and diseases that were never known to generations before them. Well, this doesn't need any uh, commentary or any explanation really in the time that we're living in. But the sad thing is that even when we are being given these signs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when we're, people are in lockdown, uh, when the coronavirus first hit, people are in lockdown, and in lockdown, there are people who are spreading immodesty and shamelessness. There are people, well, iyadu billah, who are engaging in uh, affairs and engaging, engaging in disgusting actions even while people are dropping dead around the world, even while we, our, our whole life has, has transformed because of this virus. Allah has afflicted this, uh, uh, this planet and mankind with this disease to wake us up, to remind us. And the reason, one of the reasons potentially that we have been afflicted by this is because of immorality and immodesty. But whilst these lockdowns are happening and whilst people are, you know, uh, needing to get vaccinated and there are in lines of janazahs uh, that, that we saw in the, in the pandemic, even in those days, people didn't stop being immodest. So when will we wake up? And this is uh, uh, because of us being imbalanced and not being just. Number two which is directly related to our topic today. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam said, وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُوا الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانَ إِلَّا أُخِذُوا بِالسِّنِينَ وَشِدَّةِ الْمُؤْنَةِ وَجَوْرِ السُّلْطَانِ عَلَيْهِمْ That whenever people cheat in weighing and measuring, they will be struck with famine, severe calamities, and the oppression of rulers. So now we... we see across the Muslim world how there are so many different Muslim lands where they are being subject to oppression by their own rulers, by people who claim to be Muslims. The Muslim land, Muslim people, a so-called Muslim leader who is oppressing his own people, is killing his own people. One of the reasons for this is because Muslims began to cheat other Muslims in weighing, in business, in buying, in selling, in dealings, in transactions without any care. Well, so what? It doesn't matter. As long as I'm earning money, don't care about anybody else. This attitude is what has led to this punishment being, being uh, set upon the Muslims. Number three, وَلَمْ يَمْنَعُوا زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا مُنِعُوا الْقَطْرَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَلَوْلَ الْبَهَائِمْ لَمْ يُمْطَرُوا When people stop giving zakat of their wealth, rain will be withheld from the sky, and were it not for the animals, no rain would fall upon them. Another thing that we are being afflicted with today, if you look at the news, you look at what's happening in different parts of the world, you look at droughts, water shortages, places like, uh, cities like Cape Town in South Africa, surrounded by water. They've had times in, in recent years where they've had, uh, you know, uh, from, the, from the government, and from the authorities, they were not allowed to even take a shower every day because they had to conserve water. There was not enough water to go around. There were huge water shortages. Why? Because people failed to give the zakat of their wealth. 
people don't even realize what the rulings of zakat are. The majority of people don't even correctly understand the rulings of zakat, let alone do they give zakat in the right way to the right people. And giving the correct amount of zakat to the correct place, to the correct person, to the correct individual who deserves it. This is something that is necessary upon every single Muslim to whom the conditions of zakat apply. But the vast majority of Muslims haven't even gained that knowledge. So how will they fulfill the, the obligation? Number four. وَلَمْ يَنْقُضُوا أَحْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَحْدَ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًا مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ فَأَخَذُوا بَعْضَ مَا فِي أَيْدِيهِمْ And when the people break their promise with Allah and His Messenger, Allah will enable their enemies to overpower them and take what is in their hands. Again, we can see how the, the Muslim lands have been taken by non-Muslims, how Muslims are being butchered across the world by non-Muslims. Why, why is this happening? Why are our enemies overpowering us? Because we have broken our promises with Allah and His Messenger. Why is our promise with Allah and His Messenger? Our promise with Allah and His Messenger is that we worship Allah. We fulfill our obligations. We pray five times a day. We fast in the month of Ramadan. We give zakat. If hajj is necessary upon us, we perform the hajj. We don't delay. We give everybody their due right. We don't commit oppression. We don't commit sins. These are our promises, our covenants with Allah and His Messenger Because we haven't fulfilled these covenants, our enemies have overpowered us. And finally, number five, وَمَا لَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَيَتَخَيَّرُوا مِمَّا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَأَسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Allahu Akbar. When the leaders of the Muslims do not rule according to the book of Allah and seek goodness from that which Allah has revealed, Allah will cause the Muslims to fight one another. Again, this doesn't need much explanation. We can all see what's happening around the world. Muslims killing Muslims, Muslims fighting against Muslims. Why has this happened? Because our leaders have established secular nations where they are ruling by man-made laws. Our leaders are not ruling by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Muslim leaders, Muslim governments, established law based on Quran and Sunnah, if they judged and they ruled by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muslims would not be fighting one another. Muslims would not be killing one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us the ability to, to take heed and may Allah Almighty rectify the affairs of the Muslim Ummah. Another interpretation of this verse, Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he says, Al-Ma'na, wa tukhsiru mizana hasanatikum yawm al-qiyamah, fayakuna thalika hasratan alaykum. Wa aqeemu al-wazna bil-qisti wa la tukhsiru al-mizan. Establish the balance with justice and do not uh, fall short in weighing. Imam Al-Qurtubi says this is also a reference to the scale on the Day of Judgment. So as we know, al wazmu haq the concept of our deeds being weighed on the Day of Judgment, is a concept that is established in Islam. So this is an indication towards that scale, the scale that will be established on the Day of Judgment. And Allah Almighty is commanding us to not fall short in our scale of good deeds, to ensure that we are performing uh, good deeds so that our scale of good deeds can be heavier and so that we can be uh, given a place in paradise in the hereafter. And this is uh, why the Messenger of Allah والسلام, said that whenever a person commits a sin, he should always follow that sin up with a good deed straight away. We're human beings, we make mistakes, we commit sins. The best of sinners is the one who repents. When we repent, our sins are wiped off. But along with that, along with repentance, we should also perform a good deed straight after a sin. Sometimes what happens is, when people uh, commit sins, they, they become despondent. And they think, oh, I'm a sinful person. Uh, you know, if I read namaz, it's not going to be accepted. I'm a sinful person anyway. That's the wrong attitude to have. Rather, a person who's sinful is more in need of that namaz, is more in need of performing that prayer. Because it's that prayer that's going to make the, the amount of good deeds increase and outweigh the bad deeds. 
So if we, are, if we are committing sins, we are more in need of performing good deeds so that the number of good deeds ends up outweighing the number of sins. Then in verse 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَالْأَرْضَ وَضَعَهَا لِلْأَنَامِ And Allah Almighty placed the earth for the benefit of creation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything around us for our benefit. So we can eat of the earth, drink of the earth, live and rest and take blessings from the stability of the earth. فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَالنَّخْلُ ذَاتُ الْأَكْمَامِ In the earth are fruits and dates consisting of sheaths, covers, protected for the benefit of humans. And Imam Razi says that here, فَاكِهَةٌ uh, تَنْوِينَ is for takthir, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed us with uh, an abundance of different types of fruits. So uh, fruits are an, an important source of nutrients, but it's not that there's only one type of fruit. There are so many different types of fruits of all different colors and all different uh, flavors and tastes. And Allah Almighty provided the covering and the protection for these fruits as well. So each type of fruit has its own, own covering to protect the actual nutrients inside. Allah Almighty didn't just create uh, the fruit in such a way that it was unprotected. Allah Almighty created the, the protection for the fruit as well, the cover of the fruit or the skin of the fruit as well. وَالْحَبُّ ذُو الْعَصْفِ وَالْرَيْحَانِ And uh, grains consisting of stalks and fragrant flowers and herbs. So grains like wheat and barley and rice and lentils, these are staples of our diet. Allah Almighty here is reminding us of this blessing of His. And the means, again, the means for the protection, the stalks in which uh, the, the grain is contained. And the stalks themselves are beneficial as well. So the grains are inside the stalks. When they are separated and we consume the grains, the stalks become fodder for animals. So even the stalks have their own benefit. So here Allah Almighty is reminding us of the blessing of rizq, of his gifts, of his provision, the fact that we are sustained on a daily basis by these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Almighty uh, switches the style of the surah and addresses us directly. So before the human being was being addressed in the third person, خَلَقَ insan. Allah created the human being. عَلَّمَهُ bayan. Allah taught the human being uh, how to speak. So the human being wasn't being addressed directly, it was being spoken about. But now Allah says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ which of the favors of your Lord will you <coughs> deny? Now it's an address to us directly to, to make us uh, alert, to catch our attention. That now we're being spoken to directly. So this is a very powerful verse. Uh, and this verse is repeated 31 times in the surah. So inshallah ta'ala, it's a good place to stop. Uh, and next week we'll continue with some of the wisdoms of this particular verse. Um, and we'll discuss why it's, why it's repeated so many times. And... Uh, who's being addressed here. But one interesting thing is that in Arabic, this is a, a dual form. So in English we say, if I was speaking just to uh, Qadi Sab here, I would say you. And if I was speaking to Qadi Sab and uh, another young brother over here, I would say you. Yeah. So if I, if I was to say, for example, uh, how are you? If I'm speaking to one person or I'm speaking to two people, how are you is the same in English, right? But in Arabic it's different. If I was saying how are you to one person, it's kayfa haluka. And if it's to two people, it's kayfa halukuma. The, the form of the word that you use for two people is different. So here, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا Which of the favors of your Lord will you both deny? There's two types of creation who are being addressed here. So we'll, we'll discuss that next week, inshaAllah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to study the Qur'an to understand the Quran and to implement the Quran in our lives. Amin bi jahil nabi alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma alayna illa al-balagh al-mubin.